Hi, my name is Bradley Beer. I'm from BMT Tax Depreciation. Welcome today to our detailed session on tax depreciation, what it means to you as an investor, what difference it makes to you as an investor. We're going to run through a few things today on about a quantity surveyor, depreciation, what it is, where it fits and what difference it makes to you. BMT was formed in 1997 by my now two partners Tom Plenty and Brendan Ferrugia. I joined with them in 1998 and we now completely run and own this business nationally. Um, we provide the services Australia wide and we specialise in this tax depreciation mainly. Now, before we get headlong into this depreciation, what is a quantity surveyor? BMT are quantity surveyors. Well, we did building degrees or construction management degrees and we come out as quantity surveyors from that. We since then have become associate members of the Australian Institute of Quantity Surveyors and also members of the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors. Quantity surveyors, you think they're one of those guys on the street that measures up how big the block is. Those, they're actually called cadastral surveyors. They're a little bit different to us. What we are is a specialist in the measurement and estimation of construction. So we measure how much concrete, how much steel, how much carpet, how much of everything there is in a building and what we believe is the current market cost to actually build that building. Wherever it is, whatever it is, we're the specialist in how much, is, how much of it is there there and how much should it actually cost to build. Now we, get, we as quantity surveyors get involved in construction projects at all different stages. Pre-construction, during construction or after, after construction. So pre-construction we may have an architect that we work with or the developer at an early stage and say how much should this building actually cost to build? We're thinking of building something. How much may it cost? During construction we often get involved for things like banks, developers wanting to know on the way through how much are things costing, making sure things are in check on the way through, auditing for lending institutions and things like that. After construction it's kind of looking about how much it did cost. Uh, so things that you know, that are already built. How much did that cost five years ago or should it have cost five years ago? Or what is the final cost of this actual building and let's pull it together. So what is this depreciation? We like to call it hidden cash flow for investors when they're not taking hold of it properly. It's a tax deduction basically. The building that you're using in as investment property is getting older, it's wearing out, one day it's going to fall over and the ATO says that we're able to make a, a tax deduction related to the cost of this building and the value of some of the items within it as a deduction each year in your tax return. It's available to basically any type of investment property. So house, a unit, uh, a commercial property, a high rise, a hotel, an industrial property. Even if you have a commercial property that you're operating a business from, that then sometimes becomes an investment property and this depreciation should apply to you as well. The only one that's really uh, an exception to this rule is your principal place of residence. Your house, while you live in it, is not a tax deductible investment property. So you don't get to claim it while you're living in it. If you do move out of your house, so you've been living in it for five years and then you decide, I'm going to move out, I've got to go somewhere else, this house is going to become an investment property then this depreciation should apply and we can adjust to make sure you're able to make those deductions at the appropriate time. Now, sometimes I think the easiest way to show you what happens, what the difference is if we claim this depreciation or not, is to run through a basic number scenario and say what happens if we claim depreciation against this property and what happens if we don't. Now I have to put a little bit of disclaimer in here and say that look, all these numbers are not done by us and, and our part of this is the depreciation, but we're going to run some basic round numbers to say if you had a property, it was worth a certain amount of money, what happens to me as an investor if I do or don't claim this depreciation? Consider a two bedroom unit that's new or only a few years old, purchased for say $425,000. What's going to happen with that is you're going to rent that, we hope, because we all want to make money out of investment properties, so we need tenants. Rent out of something like that where we expect to see around about say $400 per week. What that equates to is a total rental income for the year of about $20,800. So we buy this property, we're renting it out, we're getting an income of about $20,800. Great, some income. Now we're going to have some expenses that relate to this particular property. We're going to have to pay some interest. The bank's going to want their money back. We're going to have to have rates. Um, management fees, things like land tax, not my favourite one by the, by the way. Let's say in this scenario that's going to be about $30,000.
So what that means is we're going to have some income of about $20,800. We're going to pay expenses of around $30,000, meaning we're going to be in the hole for about $9,200 or about $177 a week. Not fantastic, $177 out of the back pocket. Now, it gets a little bit better than that. Even if we don't claim depreciation, the ATO allows us to basically write these losses off against this investment property, against some other income that we may have. So we have a loss here now of $9,200, and we're gonna take a basic tax rate of say 38.5%. These numbers will change based on your tax rate. We're only going to run through the 38% tax bracket today, uh, and what that will mean is that at the end of the year, you make a deduction for your $9,200, at 38% tax rate, it'll mean that you'll have about $3,496 in return, and your outlay now is going to become $5,704 for the year. That's about $110 a week. Now, you can do the appropriate forms through your accountant and have this adjusted out of your pay each week as opposed to just being the end of the year. So, a little bit better, $110 a week better. We're not, we're not kicking $177 in now, we're kicking $110 in now. Now that assumes we don't claim any depreciation. With depreciation, it gets a little bit better. We've still got a loss there of $9,200 from the start that we needed to pay out each month to keep everyone happy, including the bank. Out of a property that's about $425,000 that's within a few years old, we'd expect to see deductions around you know, ten dollars to $14,000 per year on average. Now, this, this number will change a little bit depending on the property, but we've done a particular one here and we found that the first year depreciation was $12,600. So we're now going to make a deduction for that $12,600 in addition to the $9,200. The difference between these two deductions is that the $12,600 is a non-cash deduction. These are much better because the $9,200 we actually paid out. We had to pay people. The $12,600 is the buildings getting older and wearing out and we're not paying someone $12,600 but we're still able to make this deduction. This totals a deduction now of $21,800 which, providing we still have income in this tax bracket, at a 38% tax bracket will mean a refund of about $8,284, meaning our net at cash outlay for the year now is $916. Remember we paid out $9,200, we're going to get $8,284 back in our tax. So our outlay at $916 is about $18 per week. That is much better than $177 and still much better than $110. Difference between those figures is about $92 a week. Which side of the line are you on? Are you claiming the $12,600 or are you on the other side of the line and not claiming anything? Or are you claiming $5,000, $7,000? If it can be $12,600, you want to make sure you get a hold of that and maximise that deduction. So you get as much as you can back each year from this investment property. Okay, we've been through a newer property and what sort of difference it makes. A common myth is that older properties don't have depreciation. Now, they do usually have less because they're older, but they still have some depreciation. It's always worth finding out whether or not we can find some. Consider an older property purchased for around $330,000. Now I'll run through these numbers a bit quicker because we've gone through the basic scenario the first time, but so you can get a gist and see what the difference is on an older property, let's see what happens. You can have some rental income, let's say it's $15,600. Those expenses again, let's say it's $24,000. What that means is we're going to have to kick in about $8,400 or about $161 per week. Not fantastic, coming out of the back pocket. Once again, we get to make a deduction for this loss, even without this depreciation. That $8,400 that you pay out, if we're on that 38% tax rate, it's going to mean a tax return of $3,192 for you at the end of the financial year. Our outlay now is going to be about $5,208, meaning it's about $100 a week it's going to cost you to hold onto this property, assuming we don't claim this depreciation. Once again, with depreciation, this scenario gets a bit better. We're going to still make some deductions on this older property, and let's look at the numbers. Our loss was $8,400 in the money that we had to pay out. The non-cash deduction, $5,300. That depreciation, much better when you don't have to pay it out. Total deduction now, $13,700. Our refund, if we're still on that 38% tax rate, $5,206 for the year. Our cash outlay now is $3,194 for the year, or about $61 per week. Now, the difference between those two figures is $39 per week. It's not as much as the last scenario, but 
it still makes some difference on an older property that many people would have thought it wasn't worth doing. So I love to run through an old, older property scenario like that so you can see that it still makes some difference on older properties. Now we've been through what difference it makes in cash if you do claim this depreciation or don't claim this depreciation. But why does a quantity survey get involved in this process? Why do quantity surveys do depreciation schedules? Well, depreciation and the claims on a building relate to the cost of the building and the value of items within it. Now where you don't actually have some costs available, the ATA states that they'll accept the cost estimated by a relevant professional such as a quantity surveyor. We're not the only guys in the world that know about construction costs, but they will accept something that's done by the quantity surveyor. We always ask for actual costs, we want actual costs for things and the ATA likes us to use those. But where they're not available, we'll come up and estimate those. Now, they, don't, they, they also state that they don't accept accountants, real estate agents, valuers, solicitors to actually estimate construction costs because quantity surveyors normally, as a profession, estimate the construction costs of buildings. So if you do get an audit, you want to make sure it's going to stack up with someone who knows about construction costs. The other reason really is about more money in your pocket. It's about maximising that deduction, it's about knowing the rules, knowing what we can and can't do. So you don't just want a quantity surveyor, you want a specialist in depreciation that knows all the rules and gets as much as we can in deductions out of that property. One of the most common things I hear is, doesn't my accountant look after that? Now, accountants are our friends. Most of the work we do comes to BMT because the accountant said, you should get one of these depreciation schedules, let's get the specialist in to do that. We specialise in this depreciation and also we've got that compliance thing. So we kind of help to take the risk away from the accountant. We work alongside them, we talk to them, and we make sure that we've got everything sorted out for just this specialist part of your overall tax return. So when can we apply this depreciation? You may be looking at buying an investment property, and you want to know, you want to crunch some numbers, some feasibility. Can I afford this property? How much is it actually going to cost me to own it? Part of that, an important part of that, is to work out roughly how much depreciation may be available. On our website, there's a depreciation calculator. You can go in there, put some information about the particular property you're looking to purchase, and it'll spit you out some rough numbers based on you know, expected costs and a few details you put in there to see what sort of deductions may be available. On top of that, if you get a bit closer and you want to make sure the numbers are, are closer, you can always call us up and we'll have a discussion with you on the phone about the particular property, what your numbers came up with in the calculator, is there anything special that we think is going to make a bit of difference to that, and we can give you some rule of thumb numbers over the phone fairly easily. So pre-purchase. Often if you're buying a property that's maybe new and a project marketer is involved, we may have done some estimates of the approximate depreciation on that project already. We've often done those for developers and project marketers that are selling a number of units in the particular project and we've looked at the cost of this project and said out of a unit for this much money we expect to see deductions in this particular project of around a certain amount. Those things should be pretty close because we always get a fair bit of information about the property before we put those things together. Go back. You can recoup missed deductions. Kind of works like the ATO if you don't pay your tax. They'll come back, they'll want to make you pay the tax they'll probably be unhappy and they'll probably send you a fine as well and make you pay that tax for, for some time. Kind of works the other way as well, which is kind of good. Last year, Mr Taxman, I didn't claim my depreciation that I could have. Could have been $10,000, I didn't know about it, or I only claimed $5,000. You can pretty easily amend two years of tax returns and go back, say, Mr Taxman, forgot, didn't claim it, let's claim it now. And the ATO should pay you some cash back, which is always great. We love to see some cash back in our pockets where possible. This depreciation is available to new properties, most people know that. Older properties, definitely some deductions available. A common thing I hear that is, is that it's not available on older properties. The thing I'll say is ring up, ask the question. We'll talk to you about your property and ask you a few questions about it and make sure that there is some, going to be some deductions available before we go ahead and do this report and, and go through this process. If you refurbish a property, you change what's there, you then therefore change the cost of what's there, change what's there and available to depreciate. So if refurbishments are done on a property at some point, there should be some claims available to those um, additional works that have been done. Now, we have a guarantee in place. So if you're worried about whether you're going to get enough deductions out of the property, still call, ask the question. We're the experts in this depreciation and we can make sure we're going to get enough out of it. If we can't get you deductions in the first full financial year, 
that are twice as much as what our fee is going to cost you, then you don't have to pay for this report. We don't need to do it. We need to ask enough questions up front and make sure that it is going to be worth it. You're going to get those deductions. And if it's not after we have done it, I'll back it and we'll give you the money back. Now, so far I've blanket called it depreciation, but it's actually split up into two main areas. One is what we call the building allowance or the division 43 allowance. Now, this is a deduction that relates to the structure of the building, the hard stuff, concrete floors, walls and roof, things that last a long time. In order to claim this deduction, a building needs to be built after certain dates. So there is a date thing here, so the age does matter in this particular part. Residential properties need to be built after a date in 1985. Commercial properties, 1982. It's a bit different for different types of properties. Currently, the deduction that you get against the structural cost of the building is at 2.5%. So how does this work? Let's run through a scenario. A property, let's say a house built in 2003 here, for a structural cost of $220,000, gets a deduction each year for this Division 43 or building allowance of $5,500, which is 2.5% of that $220,000 each year. Now this deduction goes for 40 years after the property was built. So if built in 2003, this deduction will last until 2043. It's $5,500 every year from then until that, that end. The only difference is if you bought it now, you don't get to go back and get it from 2003. You start claiming it from when you actually bought this property. But it is the same amount every year, no matter who owns the property. This applies to renovations sometimes as well. If they've been done after appropriate dates or structural improvements, we also get to claim this 2.5% of the cost of those extra works that have been done. The other area is what we call the plant and equipment or the fixtures and fittings within an investment property. These are things like carpets, hot water services, stoves, blinds, curtains, some light fittings, air conditioning, things that don't last as long the ATO generally allows us to claim them quicker. It's, they have a list of the ones that we can and can't claim faster. And it all relates to the effective life of that item. A lot of things get claimed over 10 years or 12 years or 15 years, depending on the item, as opposed to the building, which gets, to, gets claimed over 40 years under, under that Division 43 allowance. There's no age restrictions on these things like there is with that building allowance. So, if it's been there for a while, there's no 1985 that you need to worry about, or 1982 or any of those dates. But if it's really old, the, the, the difference is, it's about value. If the carpet's put there in 1923, it's probably not worth much now. We're not going to be able to put much of a value on it. But if you do buy an older property, a lot of the plant and equipment items have often been replaced since the start. The house built in 1923 probably had its hot water service replaced at some point because it's not still working. Other items like stoves and things have been replaced over time. So when you buy a property that is older, we'll have a look at it now and the value of the items within that. And if there's some value left, then we're able to claim some depreciation in relation to those things. So how does this work? Let's take a dishwasher. It's a plant and equipment item with a value of say $1,850 at purchase. The first full financial year, based on its effective life, we get to claim a 20% diminishing value rate of depreciation against that dishwasher. That will mean that $370 is the claim in the first year of ownership of that dishwasher. A couple of things I'd like to touch on because otherwise it would probably be the first question. Are capital improvements versus repairs? Capital improvements need to be depreciated, so they need to be included in the depreciation schedule. Repairs, maintenance will be claimable in the year that you expense those things. And your accountant will work out which ones of these need to go in what place. We'll work alongside him to make sure we just get it right. The other thing is capital gains tax. Sometimes the question will be, does depreciation affect my capital gains tax? And the answer to that question is yes, it does. Because as you claim some of this, it will affect your cost base for capital gains tax purposes. Now, generally, you make depreciation deductions at your full marginal tax rate and you'll pay capital gains tax at half your marginal tax rate. So what happens is, firstly, money in your pocket today, in my opinion, is better. So you get to claim it over the years while you own this property. And capital gains tax is something that you will pay at the end if you do actually decide to sell that property. We say always consult with your accountant because we're not accountants and these are not our expertise, but it's usually a question that comes up. A lot of us are renovators. It's becoming more popular, lots of TV shows, 
teaching us how to do it ourselves and I've done it myself. We're trying to uplift the value of the property, get more rent for the property and we are investors. So we do want to maximise the returns out of the property. Obviously another important part of that is the depreciation and the claims that are available to you. Important always, get the quantity surveyor in at the start to look at the property when you've bought it to do a depreciation schedule. Now let's say you're renting it out for a period of time, you're making these depreciation deductions and then you decide, look, it's time. I've decided I'm going to renovate this property, get the increase in value, I've worked out, I've put my plans in to council if necessary, we're all approved and we're ready to go, got the money in order. You're going to throw some stuff away when you do that. The, th the original things that were in that purchase, the stove, potentially the hot water service, carpets, some of those things that you're throwing away still had some residual value left. So whatever's left on them should be able to cl be claimed as an instant deduction in that financial year when you throw them away. We call this scrapping, scrapping the assets. You're throwing away because you don't want it anymore. Maybe it's broken down, but often it's just because you, it's, it's been decided that you're going to renovate this property and make it into a better property. So you want to make sure you get the quantity surveyor in there before to have a look at it. Obviously the new things you put in, you're changing the cost of what's there, changing what's available to depreciate, so there's more things there to depreciate after that. So you want to have a look at it before and after. At the after, you've got most of the actual costs, so it's fairly easy. We can use those actual costs and you make the depreciation deductions going forward. But scrapping is something that often makes a very big difference to the amount of deductions you get in the financial year when you do this renovation. The more we can get at that time when we're spending on renovations, because I know they're expensive, is better. So how does a specialist quantity surveyor maximise these depreciation deductions? Now this is the part that's our job, it's a little bit more technical, but just say you've got a bit of an idea on exactly how it works. The more plant and equipment items we can find, the more depreciation we're going to be able to claim in early years. Instead of claiming things at 2.5%, if we can claim them at 20% or whatever other effective life rate they come back at, we're going to get more deductions at the start. And look, when you first buy the property, that's when the expenses are as high as they're going to be. The rents, you know, we hope to go up over time and you probably haven't paid any money off this property and you've also outlaid stamp duty and all those sorts of things. So you want to get as much back in the early years as possible, I think. Constantly researching and knowing what we can't, can and can't do. We need to make sure we're on top of the ATO's rules. What, what changes do they make and when do they make them? It's got to fall under the legislation properly. If there's anything changes, we need to make sure we're abreast of that. Now we have a lot of good relationships with accounting groups. We talk to the tax office on a regular basis to make sure we're up to date with everything that's going on and we're always applying that to the reports that we actually do. The method of costing for depreciation purposes. The structure of the building itself is fairly obvious. It's 2.5% of that actual cost as a deduction each year. The plant and equipment's a little bit different. The builder goes down and buys plant and equipment items from the, the hardware store. He brings them back. There's more costs associated that are allowed to be depreciated in relation to these items. Supplying it, installing it, you need some preliminaries and consultants fees in relation to getting these things there. Preliminaries are things like temporary site sheds, temporary power, things that are needed on site to get these plant and equipment items in place. Consultants fees might be things like the mechanical engineer designs a specific air conditioning system for this building. That'll be part of the cost of that air conditioning system, consultant towards that, and it just helps us to make sure we're getting the maximum value out of these items, therefore maximising your deductions. Furniture packs. Furniture is plate and equipment, so if there's furniture in your rental property, we're going to make sure we claim it, because remember, it gets claimed quicker than what structural things do. Often furniture can get missed, so you want to make sure, we'll always ask if you've got any furniture in there that you, you do own, so we can definitely include it in these reports. Common areas in a strata complex. Now, you own part of that lift, you own part of that underground car park, you own part of that pool, you own part of the foyer, you own part of these common areas in these strata complexes when you own one unit in that building. You get to claim your depreciation and building allowances, if applicable, on these things within that property. So I just want to make sure we always include those, or your percentage of those common areas as well when we claim this depreciation. So what's involved in preparing this depreciation schedule? Well, we try to make it nice and easy for you. We need a few basic details. 
So you call up, you ask us, look, I'm thinking about a depreciation schedule. We ask you a few questions about your property. When did you buy it? What's in there? How old is it? Are you currently claiming any depreciation? So we can just identify that yes, there's going to be some deductions available on your property and make sure it's going to be worth actually engaging our service. Once we do that, we identify it is. We then need to inspect the property. So we'll contact your property manager or whoever it is to get access to that property and we'll go through at a convenient time, look at the property, we measure it all up, we've got little digital things to do that these days. We'll also identify the type of construction that it is so we can estimate the cost of construction of the property if we don't have the costs. Also, the plant equipment items, obviously we've got to find those because the more of those that we can find, the better. Carpet, how much is there? Hot water service, what's it look like? What's its condition? How old is it? So that we can then estimate the value of these things as well as the cost of the building. From there, we bring that back to the office. We've got to identify the actual age of the building. We do these things. We talk to the council. We want to make this process easy for you. Once we've done that, we prepare the report. It'll tell you how much depreciation to claim each year. It'll include things like the prime cost, diminishing value, a low value pooling schedule. And it will last for the full 40 years of the property depreciation that's available. If you haven't bought it brand new, it doesn't have 40 years left, but it will tell you, while ever you own that property, how much deduction you're able to claim each year. Take the little report back each year to the accountant and it'll give him the total numbers. We also will send a copy of that to your accountant if you wish. We get his email address, we send it to him as well. So that way he's got the numbers already by the time you get there to do your tax return. Only if you want that to be available to you. If you're multiple owners, we can also split these reports up. So if you own 30%, someone owns 70%, then we split it up because sometimes you can get a little bit better depreciation rather than just splitting the numbers up the same way because the rules change slightly. So the process is very easy and we try to keep it that way. The presentation today hopefully has given you some insight into depreciation, what it is, what it means to you as an investor and how much money it can actually save you if you get it right. I know you've not forgotten too much about what you've learned today, but just in case you do, why don't you jump on the website and join the Maverick mailing list. Twice a year we write a newsletter which we talk about depreciation, changes, some detailed articles about certain things, scrapping and what happened to this investor. And also we publish some construction costs. So you're into building or development in any way, you can see what we feel construction costs are doing at the moment in the market. You can easily chat to one of our consultants in the office, you can even do it online and we can discuss your property scenario, see whether there's, we think there's going to be any deductions there and make sure it's worth it. There's calculators on the website for depreciation and also for construction costs. The website's www.bmtqs.com.au. We also put some news on there so that you can, you know, if you just want to get on every now and then and see what the latest news is, things that have changed, we write some articles there. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and we do provide these services Australia-wide. We have offices in every capital city, and wherever it is, it'll be one of our staff that actually you deal with and that comes out and does this depreciation schedule. Thanks for watching. We look forward to helping you out with maximising your deductions on all your investment properties. All the best.